Uh, welcome to our talk, CentOS and Alma, Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. My name is Carl George, and I just now realized that we talked about Jack doing the initial intro and then introducing me, so I already messed it up. <laughs> but I guess we're, we're going to flip it around and I'm going to introduce Jack. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Carl. I work on the CPE team at Red Hat, uh, primarily working on CentOS and CentOS Stream. And this is Jack Abudabal from Alma Linux. And, hey, uh, everybody. Talk about himself a little bit more, too. Yeah, I'm uh, the community manager at Alma Linux, so you can find me running around like a chicken with its head cut off most days. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're glad to be here. Uh, we're thanks uh, also uh, to Fedora for letting us participate, and uh, we've sponsored as well um, not only the conference, but hopefully the community, and uh, we'd like to keep uh, the good energy flowing. Excellent. Where are my slides not advancing? There we go. So first, I'm going to talk about CentOS, which will be my area of specialty. Uh, traditionally, for those that, uh, oh, what's the chat saying? Okay, people can hear Jeff. All right. So for CentOS, um, the traditional CentOS distribution, what it used to be was a what we call a rebuild distribution we took the sources from red hat enterprise linux and recompiled them to create uh, what we would call a bug for bug compatible distribution it was kind of like a, a debranded white label um, rel we are in the process of changing what centos is uh, the old model where the old rebuild model we call we've we've since been calling that centos linux as a distribution. The new model that we're trying to pioneer is called CentOS Stream. That is, in effect, what we're trying to do is move CentOS from just downstream of RHEL in the development process to just upstream of RHEL. Uh, Fedora is still upstream of RHEL as well, but a, a good way to think of it is, is that Fedora is upstream for RHEL, new RHEL major versions, and CentOS will be upstream of RHEL for new minor versions. Uh, currently, the content in CentOS Stream more or less reflects what's in RHEL 8.5, which isn't released publicly yet. The current public RHEL is based on is RHEL 8.4, and that in, in the in the old model, the classic CentOS Linux still exists, and that is at 8.4, tracking RHEL as a downstream as well. Um, that's going to be end of life at the end of the end of the year, so we can focus 100% on the new model. Um, not everyone's a fan of that. It's not the best execution, but that's what we're that's what's happening with the distribution. Uh, we're since we're moving it, that's going to open up opportunity, uh, and it, it's going to leave a space in the ecosystem for people that want that still want the old model. The new middle model has a lot of benefits that I'll get into later, but that's that new spot that's being opened up in the ecosystem is where new it opens an opportunity for new rebuilds like Alma Linux, which I believe Jack wants to tell you about. Yeah, hey everybody. So if you haven't heard about Alma Linux, um, we're the only 100% community owned and governed, uh, let's call it uh, alternative to uh, the CentOS Classic model or what, what Carl referred to as CentOS Linux. And uh, we're actually quite thankful that things played out the way they did because it gives us uh, a great opportunity to fill in a spot in the ecosystem and do some things that really weren't possible before. And uh, we're also uh, very excited about the ability to finally be able to collaborate, um, to be able to send things upstream to affect RHEL, um, to take care of issues that uh, were brought up or that issues that would have been brought up in the past but weren't necessarily... Um, able to be handled because of the model, the way things were set up. So um, that's us. And uh, again, thanks to Fedora for putting on the conference and thanks for Fedora for having us. And uh, thanks for everyone that's been working with us uh, to make sure that we can fill the needs of the community. So uh, the first area of collaboration that we want to talk about in teamwork is Apple. Obviously, we're at a Fedora conference, and some people may be wondering, well, you know, what does what does, does CentOS and Alma have to do with Fedora? Well, Apple, Apple. is, yeah, first and <laughs> foremost, Apple. Apple is a sub-project of Fedora. It stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux. And 
the the real quick summary of that is that every package that isn't in rel itself is eligible to be added to this extra package of repositories um, every fedora package i should say it, these fedora packages get branched and rebuilt uh, to be compatible with rel and then delivered in this additional re repository it is extremely popular um, i remember in matthew's slides he they normally he normally shows the uh, the, the mirror hits and the DNF count me statistics that show that Apple is is highly consumed, actually even more than Fedora itself. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that Apple is still it is still part of the Fedora project. Apple packagers are Fedora packagers, so everyone that wants to collaborate and work on extra packages for our entire ecosystem, we all need to become Fedora packagers, and then the packages that we care about either submit them ourselves or uh, volunteer to co-maintain the existing ones and maintain Apple branches for them to make them available for the for the rail and rail based distributions. The big thing to remember is that Apple is a neutral playing field. It is not it doesn't favor any any particular rebuild. It doesn't even favor CentOS. Apple is built against rail exactly. Uh, that comes into play later. There's a few very, very small amount of incompatibilities when it, since CentOS is now going to be tracking the next minor version content uh, every once in a while, less than 1% of the packages in Apple will need to be rebuilt to be compatible with the next version of RHEL. Uh, we're, we're working on a thing now called Apple Next to allow packagers a place to do that, to make things work seamlessly. If you want to learn more about that, come to mine and Mohan's talk on Saturday about what's next for Apple Next. But that is not what this this uh, this presentation is about. So I will continue continue going on. Um, the big the other thing is that this that Apple benefits the entire ecosystem. If if all all my engineers or all my community members add a package to Apple, then that benefits Braille users. It benefits Rocky users. It benefits everyone. Um, yep. It is a rising a, tide lifts all boats. It is a collaboration area. Did you want to add anything about Apple, Jack? Uh, no, you basically hit it spot on. I think we can move on to the next slide. Perfect. So, rail contributions. Traditionally, rebuild distributions like the old CentOS Linux model and the new ones that are coming about like Alma, they have a mission of being bug for bug compatible with rail. The idea is that if something if something does, if something is a bug in rel, it should also be a bug in the derivative rebuild distribution, so that it's maximum compatibility. That sounds great in theory until you're hitting a bug that you don't want to hit and you want it fixed. Traditionally, in the old model, there was no contribution path for rel. You could file a bug. Ideally, if you also had a rel subscription, you could reproduce the bug on rel and demonstrate that. Maybe even open a support case if uh, you paid for it yourself or if your company was paying for rel. But if you just had a bug that was that you could only reproduce in CentOS and didn't have a, any any way to try and reproduce it on RHEL, a lot of times your bug report might just get ignored by the RHEL maintainers. The RHEL maintainers definitely didn't pay, look at bugs in bugs.centos.org. Uh, one of the big changes with the new model is that CentOS stream bugs are filed in Bugzilla under the RHEL product. That means that RHEL maintainers do pay attention to them now, and that's... The very first, that was the very first start of uh, how we're making it the contribution path. With stream, CentOS Stream 9, we're actually going to have the package sources um, be eligible to have pull requests to them or merge requests in GitLab. So that way, not only can you file bugs that the rel maintainers pay attention to, you can actually demonstrate the fix and send it in yourself. That is a big opportunity that, uh, quite frankly, the old CentOS Linux never had that opportunity to do. These new rebuilds are in a very advantageous place because if they find a bug, they can report, they can verify that that bug also exists in RHEL. Then they can verify that that bug also exists in CentOS Stream. If it's already fixed in Stream, then they know, okay, this is coming in the next minor version of RHEL, and we just have to wait to rebuild that source. If it's also reproducible in CentOS Stream, then those downstream distributions can contribute that fix and work to get it into RHEL, which then in turn gets it into their distribution. Yep, and that that's what's really most exciting to us because it's it really is it's a direct path to be able to um to affect rel and to to take care of uh, any issues that come up and as a matter of fact uh, we already are contributors um, 
uh, on that path because uh, we found some issues with Anaconda, which a community member found, and then we've submitted that uh, upstream so that now that can get fixed uh, in stream, in RHEL, and, you know, that it's a trickle-down benefit for everybody. Absolutely. And not just for Alma, for every every other derivative distribution of RHEL as well. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and I think that's part of, uh, you know, how working in the community model, community model benefits everyone is that, uh, you know, not not fracturing things and keeping everything centralized in one place and working within the existing systems and with the existing paths is what's going to let us, you know, derive maximum benefit for everybody. You know, I think there's something like eight or something like that rebuilds now, which is kind of crazy. But, uh, you know, I, I, everyone will benefit from that and the community will benefit from that work too because ultimately it ends up in the community's hands. Absolutely. The next area of collaboration we want to talk about is special interest groups. Yep. Um, a lot of people are familiar with these uh, in Fedora land also. CentOS has their own special interest groups. We're, we're trying to get more of them started now with the ability for some contributions to actually get into RHEL itself. Uh, our SIGs are growing. One of the real popular new ones is the hyperscale SIG. We've also, we're also look, there's a KMOD SIG that's getting started up to provide additional kernel modules. Other rebuild distributions, some of them are considering doing their own special interest groups. Um, that's actually not the best way to collaborate if they're just building something just for their, for their distribution. What we'd like to see with CentOS special interest groups is that all the rebuilds can participate there. Uh, we, we actually got some plans in the works, Noth nothing final and no promises, but we're hoping that we can make it where CentOS SIGs can rebuild against not just CentOS Stream, but also RHEL in the same way that Apple builds against RHEL. That, yep. that means that a CentOS SIG would be able to create uh, packages that are maximum compatibility with both RHEL, RHEL rebuilds, and then the alternate repo for CentOS Stream for any upcoming changes. Yeah, and I think one important um, point to make here, Carl, is that you know the model for CentOS is changing, right? The the project itself, uh, contrary to popular belief, is not dead. Um, it's just the model which changed, and I think you know the SIGs are uh, very active. There's a lot going on there. There are a lot of great people involved there. And uh, one of the things that, that we want to do uh, on Alma Linux's side is work within that current framework so that um, all that SIG work is still done in CentOS, right? Uh, I don't think it, it does us any good or really does anyone any good to have our own separate SIGs. I mean, we may have SIGs for different things within the distro, which are maybe not relevant to upstream. But things like this, um, I think that we do need to work within the current framework and what currently exists uh, in order to, to make sure that that stuff uh, benefits everybody um, and that everybody's getting a good look at it. And uh, like Carl said, uh, I actually sent an email out um, earlier today and we have a, a Pagger issue open about uh, creating RHEL build routes um, in the CentOS build system. So that this way we can actually go ahead and build against RHEL and then release those, you know, as part of CentOS or send send the stuff back upstream to CentOS stream. And then, uh, again, it'll be available to everybody. And I, I think that's really the most efficient model that we could probably utilize at this point. Uh, and I think that uh, it's an important point to make that there's still a lot of great people involved in the ecosystem. And, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's keep it going. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any need, um, to create anything of our own really that doesn't, that doesn't benefit everyone else. Right. It, having every rebuild have their own special SIGs would just be and a lot of times duplication of effort. And then other yeah. times it would be, well, this rebuild has this, this SIG and this rebuild has this SIG and maybe not all of them, uh, no one rebuild has everything that somebody's looking for. In the same way that Apple is a common collaboration area for extra packages, CentOS Stream is the common collaboration area to contribute into the core distribution. We'd like CentOS SIGs to be the common contribution area to create uh, extra packages that don't make sense, that aren't eligible for Apple, 
but that work across the ecosystem all in one place. Anything else you want to add on SIGs, Jack? Uh, no, I think right. we covered it. And I think, uh, again, your comments were kind of spot on, Carl. Well, that, like, that basically wraps up the actual presentation. Uh, we yeah. can open it up for questions now. Timing I'm guessing there are a lot that. of questions. Um, if you guys want to ask questions, um, just uh, send them in the QA thing and then we can, or Q&A thing, and then we can pull them out of there. And then uh, we are also having uh, an Alma Linux open office hours uh, right after this um, on Hopin as well. So uh, I'll be there. Uh, we may have other team members there. If anyone has any questions, um, please feel free. Come in. Let's meet. All right. I'm taking a look at the Q&A now. Uh, Miro asked a question. I have trouble understanding what do the SIGs actually do in CentOS? Build content in Apple or build extra content in CentOS that is not in RHEL? What's the relationship between RHEL, CentOS, SIGs, and Apple? So... Uh, SIG, CentOS SIGs have a have different rules than what Apple has. Apple is strictly extra packages, and also it doesn't have uh, kernel modules are not eligible for Apple. That's in the Apple guidelines. So CentOS SIGs can provide uh, alternate kernels, alternate kernel modules. They can provide packages that are at that replace the packages in the base distribution rather than just being extra packages. Uh, for example, the hyperscale SIG, whereas you couldn't add a newer version of say system D into Apple because that breaks the Apple rules. It's already in the base distribution. The hyperscale SIG could ship the latest ver version of system D and I believe they do. Uh, and users that opt into that repository get that package upgraded. Um, so it's different rules and different content sets. Uh, some of those, some of those packages, like I know the, uh, I believe the cloud SIG, uh, it works with the RDO project and they may upgrade some of the Python packages and libraries that are in the base distribution in order to support the latest version of OpenStack. That's another example of where uh, SIGs are, are allowed to override packages from the core, distri core, core distribution if necessary. I think that mostly answers the question as far as Apple versus SIGs. Uh, definitely if, there's a, if somebody goes to a SIG wanting to add an extra package that's not in the distribution, uh, the standard practice is to redirect those people to just add it to Apple instead as long as it meets all the qualifications and criteria over there. Right. Cool. That so, um, that question. Uh, I'm going to go in a different order because the, there was an anonymous, anonymous one right before Miro and it looks like they're stacking at the top. Uh, is Apple to be as trusted as Fedora OS? Is it safe to use without worrying too much about malicious packages? Uh, you can trust Apple just as much as you trust Fedora. Now, yep. Anyone can become a Fedora packager, they can follow the rules, and then their intentions could change to become malicious. There's no guarantees against that. But like I said, it, Apple is on the same playing field as Fedora in that sense. Uh, yeah, and I Python. think it, it, it right. has many eyes on it as well. So the, the likelihood of a supply chain attack there, um, while it exists, I would like to hope is pretty minimal due to the amount of people that are um, contributing to Apple and reviewing Apple and uh, using Apple. Absolutely. And with, uh, with and since Fedora proven packagers, since Apple packages are Fedora packages, if something malicious was discovered, any proven packager in Fedora could go and undo it and fix it if necessary. So uh, and let, this, it's on the same level of trust as Fedora itself, I would say. Work back, uh, Jack. Do you want to take the Alma Alma question? Yeah. So, uh, does Alma Linux work on U, uh, UEFI hardware, and does Alma Linux and RHEL support NVIDIA graphics cards? Well, uh, we definitely work on UA, UEFI hardware. Um, the question about the graphic cards—that's uh, a little bit more nuanced. But the general rule is, if RHEL supports it, uh, we support it. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. um, I see a question from Ladar. Familiar name. Hey, Ladar, how are you doing? Um, should I use Alma or Rocky? Why? <laughs> okay, so I figured someone would ask this question. Keep, keep it um, neutral. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, so without, without getting into Flame Wars, I think there are a few distinctions between the projects that um, people should know about. And people can make their own decision 
certainly, um, you know, we're definitely uh, not against Rocky uh, by any stretch um, or anything like that. Uh, you know, I think everyone is doing good work. Um, the, the one main difference between us, I think, is the ownership model. So um, we're uh, a 501c6 nonprofit, and uh, we actually just finalized membership guidelines. So basically what that's going to allow us to do. So number one, the original problem with CentOS was always that it was never independently, CentOS, the distribution was never independently owned and governed. Um, what we tried to do was set up this nonprofit so that um, all the IP, everything is owned by the foundation. It is a nonprofit. The foundation has membership guidelines, which basically means community members can join in um, and they have a vote and they have a say. Um, sponsors can join in. They have votes. They can have a say. Um, and we're really just trying to, to balance that between all the stakeholders. Um, I think that's really, really important because that was always the problem with the original CentOS. And now, hopefully, according to the way this was set up, there is no one point of ownership. It's owned by the community. All of it is owned by the community. Um, it's governed by the community. The community votes. The community can propose things. Um, the community can accept changes. They can reject changes. So not all of that stuff is in place yet, but it's getting there, right? We're working towards that. The foundation was established. Um, on the Rocky end, they decided to go with a uh, for-profit company. And uh, it's actually uh, PBC. And uh, sorry, my kids are wandering downstairs. Wow. Hello. Um, I figured that might happen. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so what they decided to do was set up a different structure where um, it's set up more uh, in the way of a traditional corporation. Um, now, that corporation is set up for the public good. But um, again, it's, it's all owned by one entity. And uh, there's one single shareholder there. So, I mean, I think that's that's kind of an issue. Um, you know, things will play out over time and we'll see. Um, it's not, not anything knocking them, but personally, as someone who grew up in the open source world and subscribed to open source ideals, I would like to think that we would pick a more open ownership and governance model. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of my take on it. And really, which one should you use? Again, that depends on you. Um, I think, you know, if you, if you want to subscribe to that philosophy, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to use us. Um, if you feel like you'd rather use Rocky, then go ahead and use Rocky. Um, you know, I think uh, one thing that we do have going for us is that we, the project started from a group of people that had a tremendous amount of experience doing this. So uh, we've actually been, been rebuilding RHEL for 10 years. So, um, you know, we're, we're experienced, we're seasoned, we know what we're doing. Um, we have uh, a lot of knowledge of the ins and outs of what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the, the testament to that is just how quickly we were able to get releases out um, and how, able, how quickly we've been able to get uh, security updates and errata out. Um, you know, I think it just, it just speaks for itself. So... Um, I, save, I some of, save some of it for your office hours, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I mean, I just want to give people like a comprehensive answer so that I feel like, you know, I don't want anyone to feel like we're trying to walk around or anything. Uh, right. You know, we're I trying think it'll to be, be great to go into more depth uh, on the governance models and stuff, though, in the next session. I know people are very interested yeah. in that. I'd like to hear okay. more about it as well. Um, sure. But let's go ahead and get to the rest of these questions for this session. Uh, where yep. did I leave off? Um, um, I know that I already answered a question in the text, but from Miro asked, uh, the different content sets from SIGs are delivered as optional repos. Um, yes, every SIG has a corresponding CentOS release SIG name package in the extras repo. It's not installed by default. It's completely opt-in. Uh, a big reason for that is what I mentioned earlier, that packages in those SIGs are allowed to override packages in the base distribution. So once you enable a SIG repository, it's not going to be 100% compatible with RHEL anymore. Um, that's an important thing to be aware of. It's not necessarily a bad thing. That may be exactly what you need to fix a particular problem or to run a particular stack of software you need, uh, whether that's OpenStack or Ceph or some of the virtualization things. But 
Uh, they're completely opt-in. They're not default. Uh, you want to take the Alma Plus, Jack? Yeah. Will Will there be an Alma Plus repo? Uh, that's a good question. Um, we're, since we're running short on time, let's take that into the uh, into the open office hours, and we can talk about that there. I think it might not be necessary based on uh, how yeah. successful the KMod SIG is, because yeah, a lot, exactly. a lot of the a lot of the KMod packages they were want, intending to ship were things that the CentOS Plus kernel provided plus beforehand. SIG had, yep, exactly. So if that works out correctly, then maybe it won't be necessary, but yet to be determined. Uh, let's see. So I understand how CentOS Stream benefits both RHEL and devs. It does replace Fedora as an it does replace Fedora as an upstream for RHEL, though. Uh, first part of that question, not exactly. Fedora is still the upstream for new major versions of RHEL. Uh, RHEL 9 is going to be derived from Fedora 34, and we're doing that work. Previously, that work took place in private whenever RHEL, RHEL would branch off from Fedora. Now that work is going to be taking place in the public as CentOS Stream. Uh, so right now, CentOS Stream 9, it's in, still in its early days, but that is Fedora 34... And Fedora itself was the upstream for the new major version. Now we're working on 9.0 of RHEL in CentOS, or CentOS Stream 9. Well, second part of the question. So how do you convince Fedora packagers to maintain Apple back, Apple branches benefiting CentOS Stream? Uh, it's the entire ecosystem benefit. A lot of the thing, a lot of the packages in Apple, uh, they might not, they might not make sense for Fedora itself because they're already in Fedora. Uh, whenever as far as Fedora packages that already maintain Apple packages, uh, nothing changes for them from the RHEL perspective. If the, if you're in a shop that's using a mix of Fedora and RHEL, or if you're using Fedora workstations with RHEL and production servers, on production servers, then it still is the same benefit to you know maintain your Fedora packages in, in Apple so that they are available and compatible for your RHEL machines. Nothing changes there. Uh, the Apple Next that I'm gonna talk about more on Saturday that is just a very small add-on repo for Apple that whenever an incompatibility is found, which right now we're tracking less than 1% of Apple packages even need it. But uh, an example right now is the QT stack. QT is getting rebased from 5.12 to 5.15 in the next RHEL minor version in 8.5. At least that's the plan right now. Uh, and so that means that Apple packages that linked against QT 5.12 need to be rebuilt to be installable. That's taking place in Apple 8 Next right now. And so uh, a lot of people are going to still use Apple on CentOS Stream, which is totally valid. But because of those slight changes that are coming down the pipeline, Apple Next gives those Apple those Fedora packagers a way to create compatible packages when necessary. Ben commented on there, it doesn't really replace Fedora so much as it makes the jump smaller. Yep. I would say RHEL has two upstreams now instead of just one. Yeah, I, I liked your explanation of, of ma major version versus minor version, Tom. I think that's that's really the most accurate way right. to look at it. Because previously, uh, before the CentOS Stream model, if RHEL, I think we're, running, we're out of time, but uh, before the CentOS Stream model, if you wanted to contribute, if, you know, RHEL, Red Hat has always practiced a an upstream first mentality. If you wanted to get something into RHEL, the answer was get it upstream first. That meant getting it into Fedora and having to wait three to five or six years to get it in the next major version of RHEL. That was just, that's just unacceptable for a lot of people. Um, it's just way too long of a time frame to ask for. With yep. CentOS now being just upstream of RHEL, you can, we can push people to contribute there and it gets into the next RHEL minor version without having to wait for the next RHEL major version. All right, so I think there was uh, one question about this Epo uh, work on Alma Linux. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It works very, very well. Um, I think uh, it's time we wrap up in here. Let's head yep. over to the other session just because there may be people waiting in there. So um, yep. thanks, everyone, for coming. The, uh, um, I see the Kubernetes question. Uh, real quick, I'll answer oh, that sorry. one. I don't have any idea what Kubernetes is targeting. That's all up to them. It doesn't. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see them uh, target uh, RHEL 8 and CentOS Stream 8, but uh, we're seeing some upstream projects start doing that, but I don't know if Kubernetes is doing that yet or not. So I think that wraps up all the questions, and we can go over to uh, to your office hours, Jack. I'll see you over there. Yep. All right. We'll see you guys there. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And if you need to reach us, 
Uh, you can grab us on IRC. Uh, Carl is Carl W. George, and I'm uh, the mayor. See you guys. Later, y'all.